Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's follow together. Um, today my verse is from Psalms 118 verse 5. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. Now, the first thing that stuck out to me was when hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. Like he didn't cry to something else. He cried to the Lord and the Lord brought him into a spacious place. I remember years ago, my family would go up to Canada. We'd spend some time at a lake in uh, the province of Ontario. And this lake was, was massive. And we would go out in a boat and go fishing. It was awesome fishing. But one morning, we, we get to this place, and there's a little cove, which just means there's a little, like, opening, kind of like a, a semicircle. And I have all of this lake to fish in. But I, I use my rod. And I aim it towards the shore, and I just let loose. And it goes about 10 feet up in a pine tree. And my uncle was a gracious man. He ended up climbing up in the tree to get this lure out. But it made me think, you know, prayer. Like, what are we praying to? It's what we, we lean on, right? When, when, when things are down, when things are up, we should pray too. But when things are down, like, what are you running to? When hard-pressed, do you cry to the Lord? Or are you crying to other things, right? Because some other things just turn out to be idols. And they don't have the power to save. Now, when you pray, are, are you asking, like, is there something I can do in this situation, right? Are, are we praying for a job, but then sitting on the seat, on the couch, eating Funyuns? You know what I mean? Like, we pray and God will give us direction, but sometimes we've got to put some work to it. I remember this painting, um, the Civil War painting, and it was a quote from uh, the Civil War captain on this boat. And he said, I pray, and then I grab the wheel. Because he was in a war. He was on a battle. He wasn't leaning on his own understanding. He was looking to Jesus, but he had a part to play in this too. And uh, it reminded me... Uh, I've, I've picked up this guy a couple times, like going on like almost two years now. And he, he says, you know, he's in a hotel room paying like $44 a night on a hotel room. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but that equals a lot of money a month. And he's been doing this for like almost two years. And I'm like, dude, isn't there a better way? And he, you know, had all this you know stuff, why the reasons why he was there. But I'm like, going on two years, that doesn't make sense and you know just like fishing <laughs> that that fishing uh, parable that i said man like are we casting into the trees like sometimes we just gotta let go there, there's a saying in the 12 steps it says uh, god grant me serenity to accept the things i cannot change but courage to change the things i can see there's not a lot that we can change but there are some things by the grace of god that we can allow him to work in our lives and 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 do something, you know. The journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. Look to Jesus. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. That's that's where we start. That's where our victory comes from, the Lord. And he'll guide you and tell you how to move forward. Only Jesus can bring peace in the storms in our minds. Only he can silence the oppression. His word to you can bring you into a spacious place, even when all else seems against you. He can give you a new perspective even in the storm. The storm might not go away, but he'll be with you in it. The Apostle Paul wrote this in 2 Corinthians 1, 8-10. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. He was on his missionary trip. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but rely on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. 
Did, did you catch that? He said, we were under great pressure far beyond our own ability to endure. But see, the, the, Paul saw the purpose in this. He saw God's plan, his sovereignty, his providence at, at work in his life. And he said, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Sometimes you got to go through a storm to see God at work, to, to, to build your faith so that the faith will endure. It'll be a, a genuine thing. You'll see God's presence in your life. So you'll be able to pour into someone else's and say, hey, this is what happened in my life. No, the storm didn't go. I was still hard pressed out here. But being hard pressed in here, this was able to go because I relied on Jesus and he saw me through it. It wasn't my own ability. It was God. It was God who did it. He saw me through I didn't have a lot of strength. I didn't have a lot of faith. But I was strong in the strength of the Lord. He never left me, never forsook me. It was his love that endured forever. See, Jesus didn't remove the hardship from Paul. But Paul saw it as a necessary building block for his faith. The faith that would last. A faith that would please the Lord. God doesn't always remove us from the situation or pain, but he promises to be with us in it. His comfort in the pain, his peace that surpasses all understanding, will be the spacious place. Psalms 118 verse 5. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord, and he brought me into a spacious place. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus has the power to truly save. All other things, they might offer a temporary solution, but they lack the power to save like our risen God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be blessed.